Yesterday, Ontario saw the highest COVID-19 case count in a single day since the beginning of the pandemic, with a record high of 1,042 cases. The majority of the cases were recorded in the province's COVID hotspots, Peel and York regions, Toronto, and Ottawa. But Ottawa's case count is going down. With 86 cases reported yesterday, down from 90 on Saturday, 76 cases today. Here's how Christine Elliott, Ontario's health minister, described the situation in Ottawa earlier today. Well, certainly uh, there are some areas where the numbers are starting to go down. That really is indicative of what's going on in Ottawa. In some of the other areas, we haven't seen those numbers change very much yet. But it's still too soon to say because, of course, we had uh, Thanksgiving activities happening in or around the same time that the modified stage two provisions were put in. So as far as uh, York, Toronto and Peel are concerned, uh, we're still waiting to uh, to see those uh, results and have those numbers start coming down. But uh, Ottawa is, is doing very well and we'll be following those numbers very closely to see within the 28 days what's happened there to see if some of those... Uh, provisions can be lifted but that just depends on how the numbers go it's still too early to say just yet we've reached Raywat Dion Nanden associate professor and epidemiologist at the University of Ottawa for more hi Raywat hi how are you doing okay uh so what, what do you make of this we're we're in the record high in cases including Ottawa but our own case count is going down how, how likely is that Ottawa could be back in stage three I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put money on it just yet. Uh, keep in mind that it's always a mistake to look at these daily numbers and put a lot of weight on yeah. the trend that matters. Keep in mind, too, that usually people get tested less on weekends, and so those numbers are always artificially lower. It's always better to wait till the middle of the week to see what's really going on. So uh, and even if the Thanksgiving uh, you know, ill-advised socializing was the cause of much of the spiking going on, that um, that may explain a single couple of days of spiking, but eventually those new cases will infect some other people. That's going to cause some issues. So it's, it's way too early to say what's going on. However, I will say, if we look at the wastewater testing, which I'm very excited about, yeah. it's a strange thing to say, be excited <laughs> about wastewater. But um, the way, if you don't know, uh, we do test the sewage system to see for uh, viral signals, and that's pretty independent of how much testing we're doing, and it's almost real time. And we've seen a, a, a remarkable increase in cases over the last few weeks, but then it came down a lot uh, last week, probably due to the the effects of the stage two restrictions. Then it went up again pretty dramatically, probably due to the Thanksgiving activities. So what's going to happen next? I'm not sure. But the fact that we have that tool to monitor so closely what's happening at the community level gives me a little more confidence in our ability to figure out what's going on. But are we paying enough attention to that data, to the, the wastewater data? I'm just wondering, as compared to the other sources we have for information right now. Well, I don't think media pays enough attention to it, but the scientists are definitely excited by it. And it's a pilot project being deployed in several cities across North America, and where it is being used, it's being used quite effectively. So Ottawa is on the leading edge in that sense, especially in how well the city of Ottawa shares that information publicly on their website. So it's not perfect. It's not perfect surveillance, but it's the fact that it, it tracks so well with our testing information mm-hmm. suggests to me that it is actually giving us a strong sense of the true community burden. And to the extent that it is, we're still not out of the woods. But it looks like we know what to do. The fact that the restrictions probably pushed our numbers down suggests that these economic trends result in uh, these trends. And if people want to hear more about uh, the wastewater project in particular and talking with scientists behind it, we've got some of our interviews with those scientists posted at cbc.ca slash all in a day. Does it surprise you the majority of cases being seen in the COVID hotspots despite the, the restrictions in place? Well, not really, um, because these are places where most people are. And it also may suggest that that we've taken these super spreading opportunities off the table, the bars and restaurants and so forth. That hasn't changed how people's behaviors are still unrolling, like Thanksgiving dinners or socializing inappropriately in people's houses, or the fact that many young people don't have the tools to distance, right? So they live in the group houses or mm-hmm. or they, they work in situations where they can't take days off or work from home, like being baristas, for example. So I'm not entirely surprised. Uh, it's going to take a little more time for these effects to be felt, I think. 
In our last half hour, we were just talking with someone from Open Safe Ottawa, where he, you know was a bar owner himself. But he was saying he goes into a big box stores and he sees the the guidelines not always being followed. And certainly, every day we get a, a series of emails from someone pointing out that they were in X location and they noticed this these people were not doing what they should do. And and the question that the way these these conversations always end is don't we need inspectors? Don't we need somebody coming forward and saying, hey, if you know, you're not following the, the guidelines and, and tightening in that way, not in the sense of necessarily more rules, but more people having to follow the rules that are are out there, and, and I'm just wondering from from your perspective, in terms of people's understanding. I'm not asking from a legal perspective, but sure. but in terms of of what effect those uh, those uh, measures can have on on stopping right. the spread. Yeah, public health is often a game of incentives and disincentives. And if you have too many disincentives, the incentives don't work anymore. So if the law is very hard and enforced, suddenly you breed resentment of the population and suddenly it's cool to be anti-authoritarian, right? So you got to dance that delicate line between the two poles. I'm always in favor of deploying messaging and getting people on board with the plan rather than enacting the heavy hand of the law to compel action. But it may get to the point where you need some stronger enforcement if, in fact, you get an intractable enough uh, population that is large enough that will not go along with public health guidelines. That could be deleterious to our plans. So that's a a long and wordy way of saying I have no idea what to do. (laughs) (laughs) You know, except to say that, uh, yeah, let's let's try let's try just more messaging. Let's try people posted in the big box store saying, hey, sir, put on that mask. It's, It's not for you. It's for, you know, the old person down the street who might get sick and die. Right. Um, be a good neighbor. I think we've lost sight of the neighborliness of these endeavors. This is about other people, not about us. How, how much of an impact are these rising cases across the province having on the health care system? Oh, that's huge. That is huge. So our healthcare system is always running near capacity at the best of times. And non-pandemic times are between 85% and 110% capacity in our hospitals. Right now in Ottawa, we have close to 100% uh, full capacity already, or I think we have 83% full beds, you know, or, uh, and so forth. So there isn't a lot of wiggle room. Back in the spring, we closed everything. We delayed surgeries. We had a lot of space to work with. And now we don't. Everything's open, and we're catching up on those delayed surgeries. So there isn't a lot of space to absorb COVID patients need hospitalization. So, yeah, this is a crisis in that sense, um, absolutely. And so maybe after the pandemic, we can look into expanding healthcare capacity. That would help a lot. I mean, it's interesting because people hear Ottawa's case count is going down, and your point is well taken that you can't jump on the daily numbers as being a full update but but we are seeing those similar problems with the healthcare system here right Absolutely, we are. In fact, uh, the city of Ottawa has released some modeling showing how our healthcare utilization patterns may change depending upon certain trajectories of the pandemic. So, if we stay the same or increase in less than 10% of transmission, we're in a crisis stage. We haven't got enough hospital capacity to really absorb likely cases, especially as the winter unfolds and we have more flu cases and more long-term care centers get affected, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, there's definitely a risk here of overwhelming the system. We're not there yet. Plenty of room at the end still, as mm-hmm. one colleague puts it. But we might get there. That's why the Civic is opening up, you know, a forty bed um, station in their parking lot in anticipation of that overflow. And part of the problem is since the spring the long term care centers have been rejigged and there is there's overflow that needs to be you know, uh, absorbed by the hospitals to allow distancing and spacing in the long-term care centers. So all of this is interconnected. You know, how we treat those centers affects the hospitals, affects surgeries, affects us. Do you have recommendations for Halloween? <laughs> Do it with your families. Go trick-or-treating, but don't go door-to-door. Just get dressed up and walk around your neighborhood. Maybe, like, Feed your kids your own candy. I mean, why are we going to strangers' houses anyway? I never understood that. But, you know, I'm an old man with no sense of fun. So what do I know? <laughs> All right. Old man with no sense of fun. Raywat Dionanda. That's how we're going to refer to you now every time you're on the program. Uh, thank you for being with us again today. Thank you. Raywat Dionandan. I'm not going to call him that again. Epidemiologist at the University of Ottawa. If you have thoughts on what he had to say, all in a day at cbc.ca. And again, I am wondering what you're doing that's different for Halloween.